right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over Sunlu's new PLA Plus 2.0. They sent me a few rolls of this to test out, and I thought it'd be cool to make a video and show you guys all about this new filament. In today's video, we'll go over the spec sheet. We'll go over some instances where you may want to use this type of filament, where you may not want to use this filament, how this filament compares with like between PLA all the way up to like a carbon fiber engineering filament. We'll go ahead and um, calibrate it in the H2D, and then we'll go ahead and do a test print with it so we can fully check out um, this filament. They did send me two colors of it and more rolls than I'll be able to use. So at the end of the video, look for a way in which you can get some free rolls of filament from me. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax and I'll get everything ready. All right, so here we are on Sunlu's website with um, their PLA Plus 2.0 filament. And you'll see that, um, you know, the big benefit or why you would want to use this or what it's, you know, designed for is maintaining high speed prints while improving impact resistance, um, which boasts impact strength up to whatever, you know, measurement that they're going to use this two to three times greater than PLA plus or even PLA. This enhanced durability ensures excellence resistance to drops and impact, making it an ideal choice for demanding applications. So normally we would use like, uh, you know, a PETG or ABS or ASA or one of those engineering filaments when we need something, you know, like out in my wood shop or something that needs to be, you know, impact resistant. I don't want to just drop it on the ground and it, crack and shatter which normal pla does um you know i've had several things in there um that i've used in my wood shop and pla just can't stand up to it so sometimes i have to use petg abs asa different things like that that take you know additional drying smelling with the abs and the asa there's a definite cost difference with those type of filaments and everything like that. So if you don't need that big engineering filament, but you just need a little bit more impact resistance than you would get with the standard PLA, then the PLA plus and the PLA plus 2.0 are the filament that you need to use for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the spec sheet and um, dive into that a little bit more. So here is the spec sheet for the PLA 2.0 or PLA plus 2.0. And we'll see that they've tested a lot of the elongation, flexing, and all of those different type of um, things. Where this isn't going to come into um, play is with um, chemical resistance, like you might find in ABS or ASA or one of the other engineering filaments. So if you need impact resistance and chemical resistance, then maybe some of those glass filaments um, or, you know, ABS or ASA may be a little bit better than this. But just for a little bit stronger PLA that you can use out in the shop for some of your wood shop tools and jigs and stuff like that, this should be um, plenty. And I believe on their other website, it's like $12.50 for a roll or for one of their refills or something like that. So super cost effective and should be very good at, um, you know, a little bit stronger PLA, but don't necessarily need or want to pay the price for the engineering filaments. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of places where you might want to use the PLA plus 2.0. Brackets would be a really good place for this. Somewhere where you need something durable, where things are going to be taken in and out a lot. So like these spool holders, these spool brackets right here would be a great place for that. Any place where things are going to be coming in and out um, a lot would be a great place for that or where you need durability. Another thing um, that you might want to use this for, for clips, any type of little clip that you might have. Um, this might be a great filament 
um, to use for that where you need that extra durability, impact resistance without paying for a, you know, engineering filament. And then last but not least, tool holders would be another great, um, you know, use case for this out in the garage where, you know, these hard metal tools are going to be coming in and out of these little holders and brackets and stuff. You need something that's a little bit more, um, you know, impact resistance than normal PLA. But again, you don't want to spend the money on ABS or ASA. Um, so those are some sample use cases there that I think would be great for this filament. All right, so here we are in Bamboo Studio and you'll see I have this really cool magenta color loaded in here. And let's go ahead and do a uh, calibration on it and get that stuff set. So we'll go ahead and do an auto calibration on the generic PLA. And that's all I set it up when, and when I loaded it in as a generic PLA and selected the magenta color. So let's go ahead and calibrate and I'll see you when it gets done. All right, and now that it's done, let's go ahead and have it save the K factor. And now let's move over to the flow rate. Let's go ahead and select the same filament and hit calibrate on that. And I'll see you when it gets done. Right, so here we are with the first part of it done. So let's go ahead and hit next. And it says, please find the object that is seamless and has the best smoothness. Type in the block number uh, below. So I always think the best way to look at this is just take a picture of it with your phone and then zoom into it and you can see which one is the best and the seamless. All right, so here's a picture that I took with my camera. And as you can see, there is a difference between all of these. And really the smoothest one <clears throat> I think is at zero. Maybe five, but I, I still see some ridges there. Zero is probably the smoothest one in my opinion. So let's go ahead and select a zero in studio. then hit calibrate and now it will send another configuration for us to do the same thing so I'll see when it gets done all right here we are with the second test same thing took a picture emailed it to myself now I can zoom in on it And once again, you know, looking at all the ridges and everything, I think zero. So I don't think we really needed to do any of this calibration here. Um, I think it was just fine. So let's go ahead and jump back into Bamboo Studio and go ahead and hit next. And we're going to fill in with zero and save filament presets. So this is what it will be uh, called. So we can call it Sunlu. PLA plus two flow rate calibrated. All right, so that's it with the calibration. So let me load up the Benchy and then we'll get to the next piece. All right, so here we are back in Bamboo Studio. We have our Benchy loaded in here and we have our modified it, uh, modified or calibrated filament. So let's go ahead and print it out and see how it does. It is warning us about the overhangs. For some reason, I'm still in 16. Let's change it back to 0.2. That gets us back to an hour and a half. We do know we have overhangs. That's what we're testing. So let's go ahead and print the plate. And I'll see you when it gets done.
All right, so let's take a look at the finished print and the Benchy, and we'll see that the finish is really, really good for one of the tough PLAs. And the things that I look for here are, you know, the gaps, these edges, these overhangs here. I see if there's any stringing or clumping or anything like that. That lets you know whether or not your calibration is set correctly. And this looks really, really good. And we look at this underside. This is where you, you may see problems if you don't have your filament calibrated correctly. Is this overhang right here? Everything looks good. Little bit of bumps right there. A little bit of uh, layer lines. Um, but it feels smooth to the touch under there. So really good on that. And then again, the cool part about this benchy and other benchies is there's an arch, there's a circle, and there's a square right here. So it's good to see how it handles all of these little overhangs. And as you can see, there's no support here. So it is printing in midair as it goes across there. And it did a pretty good job there. Same with this arch, same with the circle. And then again, you can see the same on the finish there. All right, so I hope you enjoyed today's video. I sure enjoyed making it and testing out this filament. And this is a great filament for that in-between from inexpensive uh, PLA up to your really expensive engineering filament. So if you're looking for something kind of in-between at a great price, check it out on Sun Lu's website or where you can find Sun Lu's filament. If you'd like to get a roll of this cool magenta or some silver for free, then join me on our live streams on Saturday evenings for the rest of the month of October, where we'll be rating um, people's uh, decorations and masks and different things that everybody's getting um, printed and ready for Halloween. So as you print these things out to decorate your house, to make masks, to help out your kids with their Halloween decorations, and everything like that and all the cool things that you're printing for that, be sure to snap some pictures and send them um, to me so that we can review them on the live stream on Saturday and you can win a couple of rolls of filament for free. I'll also have some other prizes at the end of the month, so look forward to that. And I look forward to seeing everybody on that live stream and seeing some really, really cool Halloween decorations. So if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to smash the like button, hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. And I'll see everybody on the next live stream on next Saturday. Until then, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.